What's going on guys and welcome to another video tutorial. My name is Calum and today I'm going to be going over the scrum module that's built into Taiga. I'm going to be going over the unique configurations that apply specifically to this module and I'm going to show you how to populate sprints from user stories that exist in a backlog. I'm also going to show you how to set up the burn down chart and a couple of other things that you might find helpful. Stay tuned. Alright, let's jump right into it. As you can see, we're starting from the Kanban board, which is where we left off at the end of my last video, Mastering Kanban in Taiga. The first thing we have to do is turn on the Scrum module. So we're going to go down to the Settings section, click on Modules, and then flip the switch for Scrum. Now as you can see, there's two fields here. One is for expected number of sprints, and the other one is expected total of story points. I'll explain these a little bit more in just a second, but I wanted to show that if you leave these blank, it's going to result in a burn down chart that doesn't populate. So after we flip on the switch here, you'll notice that the scrum button has popped up here over on the left hand side. We're going to click on that. That's going to bring us to the scrum board. So from the scrum board, you're going to see that there is a backlog graph that is not populated and all of the user stories that exist in the Kanban board still exist here, but they're all in the backlog section. Real quick before we go any further, I want to explain where the Scrum methodology came from. So Scrum is primarily used in software development type environments. So if I have a program that I've put out on the market and I get feedback with users asking for a specific feature or they're having a problem with a feature that's built into my product, they're going to give me feedback, and each one of those is going to become a user story. So let's use, for example, a user comments and says that he wants uh, dark mode to be a functionality in my web interface on my software. So integrate dark mode might be the user story, and there may be a number of subordinate tasks that exist to accomplish that. So from the previous example, plan YouTube script, if I go into that one, you'll see that the subordinate tasks exist here. So these are the tasks that have to get completed in order for this user story to be completed. So going back to the backlog. In the backlog, each of these user stories is a feature request or a bug that was identified by the user base. In order to fix my product, we are going to have to fix these, these user stories or integrate the features that were requested. We do that by adding those into a series of sprints. So each sprint is a time limited box that you put a number of items from the backlog into so that you can complete them in a set period of time. So here in a moment, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a sprint and how to add items from the backlog into the sprint. It's important not to bite off more than you can chew, if you will. You want to appropriately assign the number of items from the backlog that you can realistically accomplish within whatever period the sprint is set to. So by default, a sprint is one to four weeks. By default in Taiga, it's a two week period. And you can modify that down in the settings uh, section if you wish. But by default, it's two weeks. That is where Scrum came from. It was created to provide an iterative approach to fix problems or add features in a software environment. However, you can use the Scrum approach to accomplish other tasks or other projects depending on what's appropriate for your organization and for your team. Now before we get started in how to create sprints and add items to the backlog, I'm going to go back in the settings and go into modules. And here where we turned on the Scrum module in the first place, there's two fields here. One is expected number of sprints, and the other one is expected total of story points. So this is the total number of story points for the entire project. It's not what you expect to be in each sprint. So let's say that this project requires 500 hours worth of work. And story points, again, they can be representative of hours or they can be representative of priority. For example, if a thousand users reached out and said that they wanted dark mode, using the previous example, then the create dark mode user story may have more uh, story points associated with it. 
But the way that I usually approach Scrum is my assignment of points is based on the, the estimation of the number of hours it's going to take to accomplish that project. So I'm going to just, for example, put in 500 for total story points for the project, and then expected number of sprints. I'm going to put in five. So over five sprints, I expect to complete 500 hours worth of work. So a sprint is 100 hours in this particular example. I'm going to click this check mark. You have to click the check for it to apply, or it's not going to do anything. I found that out the hard way. And then we're going to go back to the Scrum module. Now from the Scrum module backlog, you'll see that there's a number of points assigned to each of these user stories. And that's going to come in handy here in just a second. You'll also notice now we have a burn down chart. I scrolled up a little. Actually, it took a second to load, didn't it? Anyway, um, I just configured the burn down uh, values. That is in the settings, the number expected number of sprints, and the total number of user story points required for this project. As you can see, for each of the sprints, there's an uh, iteration or a dot on this graph, and it shows an expected kind of progress slope. So at the beginning of the project, we have 500 hours of work to do, and at the very end of the project, we'll have zero. This is where the story points come in. So now I'm going to go ahead and create my first sprint. I'm going to click on Add Sprint over on the right-hand side. As you can see, it's prompting me for a sprint name, sprint start date, and a sprint end date. By default, again, this is two weeks, and you can change that in the settings if you like. So I'm going to name this sprint, Sprint 1. I'm going to leave the, the default dates. And then I'm going to create another sprint called Sprint 2. This one's going to start on the 17th, which is the end date of the previous one, and it's going to end two weeks after that. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. As you can see, each of the sprints that I've populated has uh, extended this green portion of the graph across the graph. And what it's showing right now is I haven't really gotten anything done whatsoever. And if I keep going at the rate that I'm going, we're, we're never going to complete this project. Over here on the right hand side, you can see the two sprints that I just created. And then in priority order, you're going to drag user stories from the backlog into the sprint. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this first one and the second one into sprint one. And then I'm going to drag the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. And the sixth one. Oh, that one didn't go. And the sixth one into sprint two. So let me move out of the way here just a little bit. So as you can see, now I have sprint one populated with two items, and I have sprint two populated with four items. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and drag this last item from the backlog into sprint two. The reason why I'm doing that is because the number of story points, or hours in this case, that are assigned to sprint one are pretty hefty. Uh, it looks like a, a total of 143 points are here. Uh, where in the second sprint, we have, I don't know, some, somewhere in the ballpark of 20. So as new items get added to the backlog, if I can estimate that 140 or 160 hours are going to get completed per sprint, obviously you're going to want assi to assign them to a sprint in a realistic manner so that you can be sure that all of the items in that sprint actually get done. So notice this hasn't changed our, our graph at all. Something that we do have that we did not have before is these sprint task boards. So I'm going to go to sprint one and click on that task board. And as you can see, we get presented with a task board specifically for this sprint. Now this looks a lot like the Kanban board. And it is. It has, on the left-hand side, each of the user stories. And if any of those user stories had subordinate tasks, as this one did, you're going to see all of those subordinate tasks listed. You can also add story list tasks. So these are tasks that are required to be done for the sprint to complete, but they're not necessarily a part of the user story. Now, as this sprint moves forward, you're going to move all of the subordinate tasks through the various levels of completion. And as these tasks get closed out, 
And what I'm going to do in order for, for this plain YouTube script user story to get completed, all of the subordinate tasks have to be done. And when I drag the last one in, you'll see that the totals up here at the top, the total points and points completed have changed. So in this sprint, we're 16% complete with this particular sprint. If we go back to the backlog, you'll see that there's an ever so slight dip in this, in this graph. I'm going to go back into Sprint 1, and I'm going to go ahead and mark all of these as complete. So, Plan YouTube Script, that's already closed. I'm going to move that to Done. Then I'm going to go back to my task board, and I'm going to mark Hype yourself up, which is worth 120 total points. I'm going to mark that as done as well. I want to go back to my backlog. You'll see that here I'm actually ahead of schedule. The total number of hours completed or points accomplished has dropped below the expected rate of burn. And then this line just continues over because nothing from Sprint 2 has been completed. As things continue to get done in Sprint 2, this number will continue to reflect where we're at in the total burn. So I'm going to go into the next sprint task board. I don't believe any of these tasks have subordinate tasks. And it appears that they don't. Each of these user stories do need to get completed individually. As we move various subordinate tasks through the phases of completion from this task board, if we go back to the Kanban board, you'll notice that all of the changes we made within the Sprint module are reflected on the Kanban board. Over here, we have Plan YouTube Script is complete, Hype Yourself Up is complete, so on and so forth. So as changes are made here in the Kanban board, they will reflect on the Scrum board and vice versa. So let's go back to the Scrum board. Also, you'll notice that there's a new little button over here that my head's in the way of. It says uh, Show Closed Sprints. This is going to show all of the sprints where every subordinate task is complete and every user story is complete. If you click on it, you can see that that sprint is, is completed. And then we can hide that. So let's go into Prepare Taiga Server. We're going to go ahead and mark that as done. And go to the next one, which is prepare OBS, and mark that as done. And then we're going to go back to the Scrum board. As you can see, these two items have been completed, and the number of points have been reflected up at the top. As these tasks or these user stories move through the process and get completed, they will be reflected on the burn down chart. So now I'm going to go ahead and mark all of these as complete, just to kind of demonstrate what the board looks like at the very end. Keep in mind, I assigned a lot fewer user stories that had points assigned. Uh, so the first story I think had 140 points assigned to it, and then the second sprint had way fewer because there weren't very many uh, user stories with a lot of points on them. Uh, notice we're still below our, our total here. Um, now in reality I had uh, originally set, actually let's go there, I originally set this to take five sprints and a total of 500 story points. Let's change that. Let's say uh, mid-project I decided that th that was maybe a, a little bit of an ambitious not ambitious. That was a little bit of a conservative estimate. Um, so let's change this now to 200 and actually let's make it 325 total story points. And now instead of five sprints, we're going to do three. Make sure you click the check mark so that it saves. We're going to go back to the scrum board. And you'll see that immediately the graph is has been updated based off of our new values. So it's okay to modify those values, but in the first place, you want to try to make it as realistic as possible. And you're probably going to base it on the total number of user stories and the points associated to those stories that are already existing in your backlog. And again, all of the changes that you make in the Scrum module will be immediately reflected in the Kanban module. So 
as you can see, all of the user stories now have been moved to the done pile. So again, the Scrum module is really helpful for somebody who is used to Scrum methodologies or in a situation where a Scrum methodology application will help the project that you're working on. But there's no reason why you have to use just Kanban or just Scrum. You can absolutely use both. Or certain team members might be more comfortable with one or the other. Ultimately, that's going to be up to the team lead and the management team, potentially. So I hope uh, you found this useful. This is just touching the surface on the capability built into Taiga. So I've already done videos on the Kanban module, on the Scrum module. The next video, I'm going to cover Epics and how you can use that. I'm really excited about Epics. I was, frankly, very unexcited about doing the Scrum video because it's it's a methodology that I, I frankly just don't employ very often. The, the things that I need to do are, are much better captured and managed in a Kanban board. But I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I do want to take a moment to say thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss out on future content. If you have any ideas or requests for content on other technologies or other systems that you'd like me to cover, please drop a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to do a tutorial just for you. Thank you and God bless.